good morning respected seniors and my dear friends this was the topic i was allotted in uh, ishakan rajasthan at ajmer so this is my one of my favorite dishes from rajasthan dal bati churma so if if we order this from two different restaurants the taste will be different why so because uh, the cook is different the ingredients the masalas whatever they are using will be different and even if you even if we keep the ingredients same then also it will be different because the quantity of ingredients the mixing timing everything will 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 be different and so the taste will also be different in a similar way uh, in multimodal analgesia you have all the analgesics you are using it regularly in different patients but the mixing of analgesics the use of different techniques varies from one anesthetist to others so coming to the definitions as per the american society of anesthesiologists um, mma is a multidisciplinary approach to pain management with a goal to maximize the analgesic effects and minimize the side effects of the medications so to understand the concept of mma in perioperative pain management we need to answer these these two questions that is why we need mma and how we can provide mma to our patients because already you have all the analgesics so why to use them and how we can use them surgery is a painful process following surgery or any injury there is tissue damage as well as the inflammatory responses so this forms the nociceptive input and ultimately perception of pain so if we look at the characteristics of post operative pain it is of various nature like uh, nociceptive sensation is there somatic pain involving muscle fascial ligament visceral pain the cutaneous somatic pain the cortical responses the reflex muscle spasm and referred pain so all these type of pain cannot be covered or cannot be treated by a single analgesic so we need multiple analgesics or multiple modes or multiple techniques to use them so use of different types of Uh, analgesics will increase the efficacy will, will reduce the doses and will minimize the adverse effects uh, which ultimately leads to improved outcome so <clears throat> we need to understand some basic pathophysiology of pain so following an incision or following an injury there is tissue damage and inflammation so it ultimately generates the action potential at the nerve terminals and there is release of all these mediators so which ultimately decreases the threshold potential of a delta and c fibers so they start firing at a low threshold current so it ultimately leads to hyperalgesia and allodynia and regarding the central part following the peripheral sensitization there is ultimately increase central central sensitization which leads to hyperalgesia spontaneous pain perception allodynia decreased threshold to peripheral stimuli expansion of receptive field and increased spontaneous activities so we all know about the consequences of inadequate pain management starting from the heart it almost affect all the systems in heart there is increased heart rate uh, increase uh, blood pressure perioperative myocardial ischemia increase oxygen demand 
etc in respiratory system there is atelectasis uh, there is decreased vital capacity um, then uh, renal perfusion also decreased in git there is decreased gut movement uh, decrease uh, muscular activity and there is uh, following limited movement there will be um, increased coagulopathy and uh, chances of dvt will be there and uh, decrease immune responses and ultimately uh, an increase anxiety depression etc mood disorders etc and another important aspect is acute pain can convert into a chronic pain if we don't treat the pain optimally so following the surgery there is activation of nociceptive fibers uh, which ultimately lead to sensitization and structural remodeling of the cns that is known as the cns neuroplasticity so acute pain ultimately convert into prolonged subacute pain and if we don't treat acute pain which ultimately lead to chronic pain if we look at the statistics uh, these are the indian data uh, the pain is moderate to severe in nature uh, up to post of day 3 it is almost 42 to 71% Mm, it was uh, done in adult patients undergoing uh, abdominal surgeries and this intensity of uh, prevalence of intensity of pain was recorded so there is high prevalence of acute post op pain and if we look at the current scenario regarding acute pain service in india it is mostly uh, the non anesthesiologist that is the surgeons and nurses are covering the acute pain service so only in 45 cases in 45% cases and uh, coming to the patient satisfaction survey the pain relief is reported by the um, patients in hospital where there is a non aps system Uh, instead of having aps system this suggests that aps service wherever it exists is yet to reach its optimal potential so we need to work so we have understood till now that the post op pain management is a big challenge it's a big challenge to provide optimal analgesia to our patients so how we can provide multimodal analgesia to our patients mma as per the definition is a combination of different analgesics and by different mechanism acts by different mechanism at different sites of the nervous system resulting in additive or synergistic analgesia with lowered adverse effects of sole administration of individual agents this regimens there is no fixed regimens uh, this regimens must be tailored according to individual patients keeping in mind the procedure being performed the side effects of individual medications and the patient's pre existing medical conditions it is also common sense that uh, we would avoid lignocaine infusion if you have already used uh, local anesthetics into its uh, safe limits so this kind of small permutation combination you have to do according to the um, patients and surgeries and other things and you may not need to use opioid intraoperatively if you have already used subarachnoid or um, block or epidural or nerve blocks but rest of the components of mma can be used in this case so what is the site of action for analgesics uh if you remember the pain pathway there are four processes or four component of the pain pathway the first one is the transduction at the this happens at the injury site and following transduction there is the signal moves towards the center that is the transmission this process is transmission and then the signal is uh, being accentuated or depressed that is the modulation modulation can occur at uh, spinal as well as supraspinal levels and uh, ultimately there is cortical 
perception of pain at the sensory cortex. So we need to remember where our analgesics are acting. So at the transduction process, it is inhibited by local anesthetics and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Whereas the transmission is limited by the local anesthetics and local anesthetic also uh, also acts at the modulation center the uh, the other drugs are opioids alpha 2 agonists like uh, dex dexmedetomidine and uh, clonidine and for perception we have opioids paracetamol alpha 2 agonist tricyclic antidepressants ketamine and prevalin so what are the Logical components so we have regional anesthetics mm, and different techniques obviously uh, other than that opioid analgesics like tramadol morphine fentanyl etc whatever is available at your setup the systemic non-opioid analgesics like acetaminophen and uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs the adjuvants are in adjuvants we have gabapentinoids gabapentin pregabalin NMD receptor antagonists like ketamine, memetidine, magnesium, alpha-2 adrenergic agents like clonidine, dexmedetomidine, glucocorticoids like dexamethasone and others like antidepressants, calcitonin, nicotine, capsaicin, cannabinoids, lidocaine, etc. So what is your recipe? <clears throat> you have to make a rational regimen for your patient depending on the surgical procedures, the types of pain involved, the intensity of the pain, the location of pain and the risk and benefits of individual techniques or drugs. So why do you think it works? MMA works because the combination of the drugs may have synergistic, sub-additive or additive effects. But uh, according to the increase in the intensity of pain, you have to add your analgesics also. Uh, with the increase in the intensity, you can add all these analgesics. But you have to keep in mind to maintain a balance between the effective analgesia and the prevention of side so in advantages we have reduction in the pain intensity scores the opioid sparing effect the reduction in the side effects of opioids and early recovery and improvement in the surgical outcome whereas these disadvantages are very minimal that is knowledge of the multiple drugs its adverse effect profile the interaction profile we all you already knew about it and the with improving your skills and knowledge of knowledge of regional anesthesia we can offer a good perioperative pain relief to our patients so the basic principle of post-operative management one is prevent the occurrence of peripheral and central sensitization that can be done can be achieved by preemptive analgesia and reduce the process of neuroplasticity which can be done by giving antihyperalgesic and anti-allodynic drugs so what are the antihyperalgesic drugs we have that is nsaids selective cox2 inhibitors lidocaine ketamine clonidine gabapentinoids tricyclic antidepressants tens and midazolam intrathecally Whereas the anti allodynic drugs are lidocaine, ketamine, low dose ketamine, and other NMD antagonists like magnesium sulfate, memantidine, the clonidine, IV, and intrathecal, both uh, gabapentinoids, midazolam, intrathecal midazolam, and low dose propofol can also act as an anti allodynic drugs. So these are the various mixes. Uh, this was first described by. Uh, Dr. Shiv Kumar Singh from the Anesthetic Society and he has made all these combinations based on his years of experience. So these are not fixed. You can make your own mixture based on your experience, your patients, your setup and use that 
in you to provide optimal analgesia so these are the class of drugs which you can use you need to know about the um, route of administration the side effects and these are the also the drugs uh, which you can read from any text and this is the guidelines we have on post-operative pain management by American Society of Anesthesiologists. It was published in 2017, uh, sorry, 2016. So you can go through these guidelines, get the idea about the different interventions, different drugs we can use and their suggested use in multimodal analgesia, uh, like lidocaine IV, ketamine IV, when to use and how can you use, what, is the, what are the doses, all everything you will get in these lines so <clears throat> i want to discuss about the benefits of regional anesthesia as a part of your multimodal analgesia so it improves the acute uh, i always insist to um, to include regional anesthesia in your uh, perioperative pain management regimen because it improves the acute perioperative pain management they reduce the opioid consumption uh, can obtain skeletal muscle relaxation without using IV muscle relaxant um, it gives a conscious patient with protective upper airway reflexes and if you are using standalone regional anesthesia it also minim has minimal effect on pulmonary or cardiac so MMA is not just for GA patients, it should be applied to all types of anesthesia. So you may ask that why to add MMA with regional anesthesia technique? You have given a wonderful block, suppose for upper limb extremity, upper extremity surgery, you have given a supraclavicular block and it's 100% successful and you are now, I'm telling you to give MMA also. So why, to, why so? Because it's, it offers the multimodal pain management, uh, the, the, your surgical field may not be covered 100% because uh, you know that intercostal brachial nerve is not covered by any approaches of the brachial plexus block. So you need some local infiltration or dexmate sedation or um, uh, midazolam fentanyl sedation, analgo sedation you need to cover that uh, area. So this multiple techniques and multiple drugs are coming up and uh, coming in action so it consists of your multimodal analgesia so in polytrauma patient there are multiple sites of injuries the prolonged position uh, pain because of prolonged position because of uh, multiple catheters and drains you need to give some analgesics for that and what if your block wears off after removal of RA catheter. Uh, so what will be your uh, pain management regimen for that patient? So, and uh, multimodal analgesia also uh, reduce the doses of local anesthetics, the less motor blockage and less sympathetic blockage will be there. And overall it provides better quality analgesia and greater patient satisfaction. So. Regional anesthesia is a major contributor for multimodal analgesia but can also be provided without RA. MMA can also be provided without RA. So these are the different regimens for multimodal regimens for different surgeries. You can also visit this postofpain.org to get, a, get an idea about the different surgeries and uh, different pain management regimen, multimodal regimen. So my take home message is multimodal analgesia improves the analgesia, it decreases the dose of individual analgesics, uh, helps in early mobilization, early enteral feeding, rapid recovery, it decreases the cost burden and overall it reduces the side effects of individual drugs. So to conclude, aggressive preemptive multimodal analgesia including regional anesthesia not only produce optimal analgesia but also prevent the occurrence of chronic pain after surgery. So that's all. Thank you.